almost exactly one year ago today, I made a video in which I described the problem we are facing with plastic pollution in our oceans, the problems with ocean cleanup endeavors, and the actual solutions we need to institute in order to clean up our act. I regret to inform you that in the 12 months since then, we have not, in fact, fixed the problem. In fact, just back in September, the Ocean Cleanup Project did another PR push in which they made up an animation of what it might look like if their project actually worked, and they used that video to ask for more donations, which apparently led their biggest supporters to assume that this meant it really was working which it isn't. I bring this up because of a few recent relevant studies. First, biologists in the UK and Finland found that at least one mechanical plastic collector is responsible for killing an impressive number of oceanic life forms. (laughs) This is something that researchers have been calling out since before Ocean Cleanup even built one of their first failed devices. So it's not exactly surprising, but having hard data is always nice. In this case, the researchers looked at a sea bin, which is a similar but slightly different project from Ocean Cleanup that uh, Sieben asked the important question, if we have so much trash in the ocean, why don't we just throw some trash cans in there too? <laughs> See if that helps. Uh, for real though, it's not, it's not a terrible idea. Uh, the sea bin floats in a harbor or in a marina and it's connected to electricity on land that allows a pump to force water through a filter that catches debris in the sea bin. And it does catch some litter, as the biologists observed in this new study. Uh, On average, it removed 58 items of litter per day, which they say were mostly plastic pellets, styrofoam balls, and plastic fragments. And that's great. But unfortunately, each day, they also caught 13 marine organisms, uh, which were things like eels and crabs and shrimp. And half of those organisms just died in the sea bin, and the other half were released. Uh, But the worst news is that there's a lot of research out there showing that fish do not survive discarding processes well, thanks to things like temperature changes, injuries that we can't necessarily see, and even just making them easier prey for birds and marine animals that are hunting near the surface. So... A lot of the ones that were released probably died too. Uh, These researchers concluded that compared to manual methods of removing plastic from the water, like just using nets from pontoons, the sea bin and similar technology is less efficient and more likely to kill organisms. I tried to make that last sentence as simple and easy to understand as possible. These devices cause more harm and do less good than existing methods. But I know for a fact that there's still going to be people in the comments below going, well, at least they're doing something. (laughs) Because at the end of the day, we have a large population of people who lack critical thinking skills and who fervently want to believe that no matter how bad things get, technology will save us. And if we simply do not criticize that technology, try to improve it, or try to find more efficient technology, then it'll it'll work. Um, and unfortunately, third-party evaluations of these things show that that is just not true. And that brings me to the next study I wanted to talk about. Instead of throwing all this plastic away and having it end up in our oceans, why don't we just recycle it? Well, That's something that I've long been skeptical of, not recycling in general, because scientists have actually done a pretty good job of perfecting the recycling of things like aluminum cans, but specifically recycling plastic. It has been no secret amongst experts for at least the past 20 years when I last took an environmental science class, but probably for much longer, that it is very, very difficult to recycle plastic. So this new report would only truly be groundbreaking if it found otherwise, but what the hell, it gives me an opportunity to point out something that a lot of people still do not realize. First of all, um, let me say that this paper comes from Greenpeace. They're a clearly biased environmental justice organization that has not always necessarily been on the side of good science. 
For instance, I disagree with their anti-nuclear power stance, which has included them fear-mongering over things like radioactive pigeons at a UK nuclear site. They're also pretty anti-GMO because they claim it causes health problems for which there is no solid scientific evidence. On the other hand, uh, they've done what I think is pretty important work in things like stopping commercial whaling efforts and pushing for more renewable energy, pushing back against the fossil fuel industry. So overall, they're a mixed bag, which is why we should always take any of their pronouncements with a big old grain of salt. But like I say, what they're reporting in, on in this case is simply not news. The vast majority of plastic we use every day does not get recycled. And that's not because we aren't putting it in the right wheelie bin. And it's not even because the trash collectors aren't keeping those bins separate and taking them to the right place for disposal. Most of the plastic trash that you put in your recycling does go to a recycling facility where about maybe 5% of it gets recycled. The rest goes into a landfill. You see, the main issue here is that plastic encompasses a lot of different materials, as it can be found in everything from soda bottles to carpeting to my glasses. That's why experts break plastics down into seven categories. And that's why if you check your trash, you can see a number that will tell you what type of plastic trash you have so that you can recycle it properly. So like an empty jar of peanut butter, which I guess would just be an empty jar, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, that, for instance, would probably be in category one for polyethylene terephthalate, 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 or PET, PET, let's just call it that. A detergent bottle is probably in category two. That would be high density polyethylene or P- HDPE. And those are the main two categories of plastic that most recycling facilities will accept. So they won't accept things like teething rings, that's category three, PVC or vinyl, Uh, not bubble wrap or grocery bags, that's category four, low density polyethylene, not straws and bottle cups, that's category five, polypropylene, not styrofoam, that's category six, and not eyeglasses, category seven. I should point out that many recycling facilities do say they'll take category five, so things like straws, but then they end up recycling less than 5% of those items and they throw the rest in the landfill. And, uh, you know, they used to sell those things to other countries, but other countries have caught on and we can't do that anymore. Oh, well. Uh, Even in the best case of category one plastics, it's hard to recycle them because there are things that exist within that category that, unlike paper or metals, can't be combined with other plastics in the same category for recycling. So as Greenpeace correctly notes, different plastics have different melting points, dyes, and colorants. Different types of chemical additives give plastics specific characteristics such as flexibility or rigidity. Polyethylene terith- uh, PET1 bottles are made by blow molding and cannot be recycled with PET number one cups, trays, or clamshells, which are made by theraforming and are a different PET number one material. Green PET number one bottles cannot be recycled with clear PET number one bottles. And it goes on and on. When you combine that with the fact that the process to recycle any plastic is extremely inefficient, not to mention possibly hazardous for the environment, it's not surprising that even in the most recyclable category of PET number one, they still only manage to recycle on average about 20% of the plastic into something that we can actually use again. So what's a baby environmentalist to do these days? You know, should we just cut out the middleman and start shoving plastic bottles down dolphins' blowholes? That would be mean. Uh, Dolphins are jerks though, so. No, don't be dramatic. Here's the rest of that depressing PET number one paragraph from Greenpeace that might give you a little bit of hope. To combat this issue, all beverage companies operating in Japan have voluntarily used only clear PET number one since 1992, and South Korea banned colored PET number one in 2020. Aha, so we have, on the one hand, an industry that actually policed itself, and on the other hand, we have a country that enforced a standard 
on the industry. So that must that must be nice for them. Uh, we don't have either right now. So yeah, obviously, you know, I'm I'm recording this on uh, the week we have elections here in the U.S. Um, you already know where I fall on that. You know, vote against every Republican you can. The ma- the majority of them desperately want fascism, and they're coming for your rights. But if you have the opportunity, try and vote for someone progressive who supports things like the Green New Deal, someone who wants to hold the fossil fuel industry and the beverage industries responsible. Both of those industries have promised to increase production of single-use plastics for their own profit. We need to stop them. Uh, just as I've, as I've said when I've talked about ocean cleanup, it's not enough to bail out the lifeboat before we've plugged the hole. And in this case, I'm not just referring to the huge amount of trash pouring into our waterways. I'm talking one step further back. I'm talking about the amount of trash we are buying and the amount of trash companies like Coca-Cola and PepsiCo are producing. So, If you have the opportunity to get a progressive representative, please vote for them. And if you have the opportunity to reuse something or choose a material other than plastic, please do that too. And don't get too stressed if you still struggle to know whether your plastic bags go in the recycling bin or the landfill bin. Chances are no one else knows either.